Hi everyone, I'm Paul Moraff, Chief Innovation Officer at Cogstate. I want to share with you uh, a presentation that we made recently uh, at the ADPD meeting in Gothenburg that shows the process and the progress we're making uh, in the development of our computerized neuropsychological tests for their use in remote or decentralized clinical trials. So the uh, example of that that I'm going to discuss now is uh, the preclinical Alzheimer's cognitive composite. So I'm going to focus today on three tests that are from the pack. That is the California verbal list learning test, the paragraph recall test and the digit symbol coding test. And what we've done is replaced those tests uh, with tests of our own that are optimized for use across a telemedicine platform. So what we did is we used uh, something called the Fuller framework uh, that was applied to, um, to adapt what was called uh, clinical uh, or patient reported outcomes or clinical outcomes that had been collected using paper scales and optimize them for use on computer uh, computer tablets, if you like. So shifting the questionnaire or the paper scale to a computer tablet. Um, the fuller framework was sort of developed to say, does moving uh, the context in which the information is collected from paper to computer change the nature of the test? So we uh, ran that analysis and essentially came up with the, uh, the, the, the conclusion that after showing what we did to a bunch of neuropsychologists, that in the mo most we needed to make just functional or instructional adaptions to our tests, but that they advised us that they would like to see data on equivalence so this uh, data is the data that we summarized uh, at, at that study. And we gave these tests to people on a tablet sitting right next to them. And we gave these tests to people who were sitting in a different location through a Zoom health or through a Zoom uh, telemedicine framework. Uh, and the um, pink or purple vert line reflects the score on the test when it was done uh, in clinic or in person. And the green reflects the score on the test in their raw metric as what it was done when it was remote. And this is done for two groups of people, a group of people who met criteria for preclinical AD and a group of people who met clinical criteria for prodromal Alzheimer's disease. So if we focus on the verbal memory test, you can see that the number of words recalled in the preclinical AD group, about 22, was not different between when it was done over Zoom or when it was done uh, in the clinic. But these are the same people doing the test under, under both conditions. And the order in which they do that is also randomized. So some do the clinic first, some do the remote first. Um, you can see that if you compared the performance on the international shopping list test in the prodromal group, you can see that on average they're remembering about 16 words. So fewer words than the preclinical AD group, which is what you'd expect, and no difference in performance between whether that was elicited uh, from a, a, a in clinic or whether it was elicited remotely. So you can see that largely remote and in clinic are the same in both groups and the magnitude of impairment is, is, is about the same. And you can see in clinic we have an effect size of about 1.69, 1.7 and you can see remote about 1.62. So for us that's a, a, a validation that modifying this test to give through the Tally Health or through the Zoom Health uh, framework uh, allowed us to retain both its validity in terms of its construct validity. It measures the same thing as it measures when it's done in clinic and also it's a criterion validity. So its sensitivity to impairment was unaffected by the remote administration. Uh, if you look to the right of that data, you can see for both the digit symbol substitution test and the PAL, both of these tests require individuals to interact with a computer screen. Uh, and I won't go through in great detail, but you can see that for both of those visual manual tests, so that is visual stimuli requiring manual responses, 
performance, the number of errors in green and purple, uh, or the number of correct in green and purple, is equivalent for remote and in-clinic assessments in both groups. You can see that equivalence is indicated uh, across the figures. Uh, and you can see that for both tests, performance in the prodromal AD group is a little worse than performance in the preclinical AD group. Uh, as you'd expect, one group is, has MCI, the other doesn't. Uh, and you can see that we've given there the magnitude of the impairment. Um, just uh, to say then, you know, uh, oftentimes uh, our claims about construct validity are based on correlation correlation of the new test with the old test. Uh, on the left here, you can see a scatter plot of the uh, ABLE pack derived from for performance on those three tests. The dark black uh, scores uh, there showing the two groups. And you can see that the correlation between performance and the remote pack uh, and the ABLE pack, the original one, uh, is very high. Uh, and so we can essentially say that the um, the construct validity is, is very strong. So, uh, you know, to, to look at this, uh, it, it, what it does is reflects Cogstate's uh, continual approach to try and really understand and optimize what remote testing is, how we, how we change and make our tests super sensitive uh, and applicable for use in those contexts, at the same time as providing sufficient evidence that would support claims about decisions that were made on the basis of their application. So that is that the tests retain their reliability, retain their validity, uh, so that um, we can move to a circumstance where giving tests in remote settings uh, is de rigueur, is, is as easy and as accepted as conventional assessments.